very amazing video. Now, I, I like the fact say they bring to our attention, say soldiers, not because say, they wear the uniform, now they fear them, and because of the pains where they don't actually go through. Talking about pain is a gift. We get the author, Tosin Himogeme, inside the house. Good to have you inside the house. Yeah, good, good to be with you here. <laughs> now, just, just quickly, again, one particular thing when you write for your, for your book, you talk, say, make you not pray for an easy life. Yes. Pray for the strength for you to endure a difficult one. Yes. Not wish say the Lord where you they carry go they very lighter. Wish say the one where you they carry go they for wish for a stronger back to yes. take carry the load. Yes. Why? Why would they pray say we need to go through pains? <laughs> like I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, basically, you see, it's our chief that actually views us as human beings. Okay. There's a saying by Denzel Washington that. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Oh. It is the, 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 the hardship, the pains, the difficulties that we go through in life. And they make us be, you know, man. That's what, you know, ticking us. That's what makes us tough. With the analogy of the soldiers, why do we fear soldiers? Because we know they've gone through a lot of pain, yes. a lot of training, a lot of discipline, and all that. Mm -hmm. So we become scared of them. So naturally, when we go through certain things, adversity, circumstances, it makes us better, it builds our character. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why it says that do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength mm -hmm. to endure a, a, a difficult one. Mm. That makes you, you know, more, more, more tougher. That makes you more better. But Tosin, so if a way they watch us now go say, Tosin, you don't understand. <laughs> the pain where they go through, I just won't take my life. My mama leave me, I not get job for years, I never see food to chop for three days now, and you the talk say make I enjoy I endure this pain. You don't understand what in pain be. Tell us. You don't go through pains and how you don't actually come out of them. Of course, of course. The book was inspired by my own experiences. Don't be say, I just feel, say, ah, people, they go through pain. So I need to write a book, find a way to solve people's pain. No, I went through pain myself. I use a particular phrase that says, when pain struck me, I died to who I was to give birth to who I am still becoming. So pain, when we go through pain, we die to our old self. Then the new person is born, you know, is better. Tell us about that pain so, that you go through. Yeah, okay. As the Nigeria, typical Nigerian setting, okay. when I graduated from the University of Lagos, I read economics. One of the first jobs that I got was washing, working as a plate, plate washer and dishwasher. It was a very humbling, you know, experience. Despite the fact that I came from a privileged background, I had no business at all working there. I could have just, you know, stayed at home and be collecting my father's, you know, salary. Mm -hmm. But I needed to go through something different because I'd been, I had a soft or smooth life all along and I wanted to experience something different. So I was subjected to start working at one of the renowned hotels in Nigeria. So in Lagos specifically. So being a plate washer, being a pot washer, coming from a privileged background was very, very, very humiliating for me, especially the fact that I was a graduate. Mm -hmm. So I wake up 4.30 in the morning mm -hmm. trying to catch the staff bus. Sometimes I don't even, I won't even take my bath because I know wow. that I'm going to get into the mud of, of what yes. is, you know, having my bath and mm -hmm. all that. I wear uniform, I will mop floors. One of, the even, one, of, one, one of the most humiliating experiences was the fact that my supervisors, the mm -hmm. people who were even above me, were not even as qualified as I was. They don't get your kind of they degree. They don't get the degree. You understand? Some of them were schools out there. They were just pursuing their degree. You understand? Some, like, for example, some girls, some ladies who come, I, I used to clear garbage. I used to work as a garbage man too. So sometimes I'll be clearing the garbage, I'll be mopping floors, and the girl will just come spit on the floor hey, or spit whoa. in the garbage. And I have to use my hand to, you know, to pack hey. all these things. So it was really, but it changed my perspective wow. about life. I saw life differently. It made me more responsible, made me more, more, more disciplined. And it was on that job that I discovered my purpose. It was that, on that job that I discovered who I am today. Do you understand? So I used to, I used to say something that when I resume on that job, I die. I go in, I go, I, I, I become unconscious because you cannot engage in that kind of job and be, you know, sane and be conscious. Exactly. So we used to have eight hours, we used to work for eight hours stretch. So I work, I watched it for eight whole hours. So I'll go unconscious and I'll become, I'll, I'll go unconscious, I'll become conscious after, you know, the job, after the, uh, my, my closing hour. Now, within that period, mm -hmm. I'll be in the realm of imagination, you know, thinking about different things. Mm. Several ideas, most of the ideas I have today, most of the thoughts that, was you know revealed in this book came from that experience came from that you know and it made me become a deep thinker because eventually mastering you know being unconscious over and over and over and over again made me you know a deep thinker and people ask me these days how are you able to speak so well how are you able to write so well how you so, how you how come you're so deep and all that and then i remember that it was you know a very very terrible experience that built that and it wasn't just that 
I was supposed to be promoted. I was supposed to get to the front office. I got disappointed. I, I had I was there for about a year. I, I could I didn't get started. I was a casual. I was not even up earning up to thirty thousand. The highest salary I got then was about twenty five thousand. Do you understand? And outside, people see me as a big boy. You're walking around the renowned hotels. You know. After that experience was for a year, though, I worked under a lawyer. And then that was the first part was the physical pressure. Now it was like God said, okay, I don't think you come off for the physical pressure. Now let's go to the, you know, the, 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 the mental one. So I was working under a lawyer who made life a living hell for me. Wow. She frustrated me. Yeah. But making life a living hell for me brought out the best out of me. Prior to that time, I was passive. I was not competent. I wasn't courageous. But, you know, being under that, you know, under, under that woman, you know, made me, you know, step up, made me toughen up, made me become more conscious, become more, um, more responsible. Mm. So I said developing, you know, competencies. I was working with lawyers and they used to make me feel inferior, you know. Lawyers have this, I know, you know, right? of making others feel inferior. I so I had to start reading judgment, I had to start reading legislation, reading all those, mm. and over time, I got better. You know what, and, and so just hearing your story, you don't sh show to me, say, you're not a person where the ability for you to handle stress and to handle pain, you actually take them in a positive way. Yes. Even though, say, it not, it not be day easy. Yes. But you take them in a positive way and you yes. pick out something from them. Of course. But some people, they know they take them in a positive yes, way. Yes, and that's... Some that's people, they decide to take their life. Negative, of course. So when you are going through pain or when things they actually happen to you, what it be those things where you're supposed to they invite, or rather they do, where go tailor you towards the positive? Now, there's a part of the book, I was going to get to that part. Okay. Chapter 3 of the book says, okay. pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Mm. Everybody will go, to, go through pain. Everyone is subjected to pain, not even just human beings. Every creature on earth must go through pain. Mm -hmm. But suffering from that pain is a choice. There's an analogy I always give. If you, if you, if you know Ikeja along, there's this bridge at the Kedja along. There's this crippled man there, you know, okay. he's, he's a, he's a double, double amputee. Mm -hmm. And despite the fact that he's disabled, he is not suffering from his pain. If you are walking on that bridge, you see this man sweeping the stairs. You yes, know, I, don't, to, I don't see him. You don't see him yes. in here, exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't now, see he's supposed to just become completely useless, not do anything about his situation and start begging. But he said, no, I'm not going to just, you know, be... be, be be discouraged or I'm not going to be, be, be brought down by this situation. Mm. I want to make the best out of my life. And despite the pain, he still acts. Now, there are two things that happen when you go through pain. You either become better or you become bitter. But it's down to how you perceive what you're going through. Mm. Someone once said, Dwayne Dyer, he said, when you change the way you look at things, mm. the things you look at, they change. Now, when you look at your situation and say, this thing is going to bring out the best out of me. Mm -hmm. This thing is going to make me a better person. Mm -hmm. whenever, I whine, whenever I whine about mm -hmm. my situation, I remember that whenever I whine about the fact that, you know, the heat of life is making me, is bringing me down, I remember that it's that same heat that you find with silver. Very true. Do you understand? So, if first of all, we can change how we perceive the situation, what can I draw from this? Mm. Do you understand? When we change our, 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 our attitude, will also change. Now, if I didn't go through pain, I wouldn't have written this book. True. If my life was easy and everything was smooth, and all, I wouldn't write this book. Now, there are certain times you go through circumstances and you, you, you think you, death is just the only thing you can do. Exactly. But then, Some people they feel like that. There are certain times you go through pain for the, for the sake of others. It is called redemptive pain. Going through pain for the sake of others. Let me give you an, an example. Joyce Meyer, Joyce Meyer, the, mm -hmm. the, the evangelist. Now, she was raped by her own father, her own biological father, when she was a teenager. She was raped for several years, over 200 times, mm -hmm. you know, and then she was subjected to low self-esteem. She was depressed. There was even a time she started praying for a younger sister to be able to share, so they could share the sexual duties. Imagine. So she went through a lot of stuff, and there was even a time her mother caught them in the heart, but her mom didn't do anything, mm -hmm. and she felt bad about it. She didn't have friends, she had no social life. Later, when she became an adult and she got married, she got married to a man who was abusive. Do you understand? So she got married after five years, the marriage crashed, and then she they divorced. Now she also went through, she had cancer, she went through mm -hmm. all they kinds lost. of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, today, everything she has gone through was life's way of training her for who she ought to be training her for her mission in life. Now, because she was ripped, 
she was sexually abused. Now she coaches sexually abused people today. Mm. Because she was divorced, she coaches divorces today. Because she had low self-esteem, she had cancer, and everything she's gone through is what has formed our ministry today. Mm. She's worth over a billion dollars today. Yes, I know. So everything she's gone through is what has formed her today. Sometimes when you go through pain, it's not for your own sake. God knows you can handle it. But there are, certain, there are people, generations to come after you who may not be able to handle it. So you are the leader in that aspect. And when you can handle it, you now find a solution. And then you now prefer a solution to subsequent, to, to, other, to the generations that are coming. If I, didn't, if I didn't go through pain and go through it and become better by it, I would not find solutions to write in a I book. I like that. I like that. For every pain, every struggle where they go through, there's something good for you to take out of them. Of course. Now, in your book, <clears throat> for still page two, um, chapter two, where you, talk, where you talk about, you say... Even when you get pains, yes. you're not supposed to be that pain. Yes, even when you I'm say, in don't pain. let that condition, whatever condition we they face, not let that condition or emotions influence your decision. Of course. You now the captain of your uh, of ship. your ship, uh, your ship and the master of your, of fate, your life. Your life. Strong That's words. Touching. Strong <laughs> words. Strong <laughs> words. So no matter what you they go yes, through, yes. Don't, not become that thing. Can't, you you can actually rise above yes, it. Yes. Uh, how people forget this book? This one a book where you need to get. Trust me. How they forget them? I've been trying to promote it. I've been on a couple of media houses and all that. I have distributors. I will just maybe give my social media handles. Please give us or your my social phone media number. Handles, please. Yes, across social media, Twitter, Instagram. My handle is T I Inspires. My T I Inspires. inspires. Yeah. T double I N S P I R E S. Mm. So you need to actually follow on um, social media in there for Instagram, Twitter, C I I C I, I inspires. I, yes. um, just follow on and then send a message on how to get this book. Any plans for e copy? Because now there is, thing. there is, of course, there is e copy. Okay. It's, it's available already. All right. So if you want e copy and a, a copy of um electronic copy, just send a message, please. This one a book where you need to read. <laughs> Pain is a gift, no and matter the, what you they go through. Exactly. See the positive of that struggle, of that condition. Thank you so much, Tosin, yeah, for writing this book. Pleasure. And thank you for coming inside the house to let people know, say, no matter what you they go through, yes. you feel actually make them the best, yes. um, make the best out of that situation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank any you. words, any final words to the people? Yeah, like I said, I always say pain is a gift. A smooth sea never made a skillful marina. Mm. So a, an easy life would never make you become that man God has purposed you mm. to become. So whatever you go through, look at the positive side of it and you become better. Mm. Tosin, a job lesson <laughs> can keep you here because people need to actually hear all these words when you get from out. But please thank the bunch of you actually enter inside the house. Yeah. Don't forget again, a hand on a TI inspires. Send a message, follow them, support this particular ministry where don't you can the inside. To enjoy more of this our Ubunke videos when you just watch, Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.